Cool. Uh, yeah, like uh, Shannon said, we're going to be talking about access in the age of agentic. So uh, maybe a little clickbaity the title, who knows? But regardless, we'll we'll keep going. Um, yeah. So uh, just a quick bit about me. Uh, like Shannon said, I'm a dev advocate over at Pomerium, uh, hailing from Montreal. Uh, these are all the places you can find me. A uh, bit of my background, real quick. I've been traditionally a web dev, mainly app developer, and uh, I'm now in the infra <laughs> security space. So I'm still pretty fresh here. So uh, just to give you a bit of con context. Um, so what are we going to cover? Uh, we're going to talk about what zero trust security is. Uh, I know when I still talk to some people, they're not sure what it is. So I think it's good to cover that. And uh, then we're going to just cover, you know, what is MCP briefly? Uh, I think most of the people joining here will probably know, but for folks who might not have been at the conference or just new to it, uh, be good to cover that. And then we'll just kind of dig into zero trust with MCP. And then we'll just kind of wrap things up with a demo. So what is zero trust security? So it's a security model that assumes no implicit trust, not even inside your network, uh, unlike traditional security where it relied on perimeter-based access. Like once you're in, you were trusted, never questioned again. Uh, but with the rise of like remote work, SaaS and microservices that broke that whole model. And zero trust enforces authentication and authorization for literally every request. And the other key point about it is context matters. Um, and just a little side note about the history of this, uh, Google is the one that uh, actually started zero security. There's some papers I have linked in the resources called the Beyond Corp papers. Uh, this all started due to a breach in, I think it was the 2010s at Google. So that's how this all came about. So let's just talk about the core principles of zero trust. So there's strong identity verification, uh, least privilege is always on the table. It's continuous authorization and verification. And there's always this context aware policy enforcement. And there is never any implicit trust. You always have to check. And if you put all that together, you get something that's called an identity aware proxy. It's, it's a core building block of zero trust. It enforces all the things I mentioned, basically. And uh, I'll just give you a nice little picture here. But uh, the TLDR is whether your it doesn't matter where the user is coming from whether it's in an office you know in some internal network or somebody on the outside you're always going through this identity aware proxy and in there you basically are wired up to an identity provider you know so like the classics like github or google it could be your own uh you know a lot of devs like uh what is it cloak uh the, the name's escaping me but um you also have a policy engine and all those things together evaluate can you access something internally and that's how the, the request gets forwarded um the interesting thing about the policy engine is you can have some basic stuff like you know like is it in this domain and stuff but you can add more dynamic stuff too like uh for example an on-call uh, roster you know uh device uh, posture etc so it's kind of you know build build your own policy uh, but it's also uniform uh, security. Um, and I will mention this isn't specific to MCP or agentic access. Like uh, this is something that secures basically pretty much any internal apps you want to. So let's talk about from human access to agentic access. So, you know, traditional systems assumed users with login portals, but now, you know, you've got LLMs, automated things, dev tools. And these things act on your behalf, but with different risks. So we, we need a, a standard way to expose them securely. And then uh, that brings us to MCP. So the model context protocol, I'm not going to go into it too, too much uh, because we just had a conference. Uh, you can check out the resources here. Um, but it's really like a standard interface for tools that LMM agents can use to do actions or get additional context. Um, they can also be clients and servers in MCP. And so TLDR about MCP clients, think of something like Claude or, or Goose. Uh, Angie Jones gave a great talk from uh, Block last week about how they're using MCP and Goose got a lot of shout outs. Um, VS Code is another one. It's new in their Insiders edition. They support uh, remote MCPs now. 
And the other interesting thing is an MCP server can also be an MCP client. So let's talk about MCP security best practices. I'm, I'm not gonna go into the whole paper. Uh, there's uh, a link to the blog post here and in the resources, but some of the, the takeaways are, uh, you know, place MCP servers behind a proxy, enforce the authentication. You wanna validate those tokens uh, for the audience and scopes. You wanna prevent token pass through preserve user content, and you, you really want to audit as much as possible. And while the MCP security best practices don't explicitly say zero trust in the uh, on that uh, uh, page in the docs, a, a lot of those principles they outline strongly align with zero trust concepts. So why zero trust for MCP? Well, kind of alluded to it a little bit by uh, the last slide, but um, you know, OAuth is on the scene now in MCP, which is great, uh, but that alone can't enforce like device trust or session-based policies. Um, and also uh, VPNs don't work well with hosted LMs like Claude or ChatGPT. MCP tool access is uh, sensitive systems potentially. So you need a per request policy potentially. Uh, and, and zero trust gives you access control before the request ever reaches your service. So if you don't get in, you're blocked at the proxy. You never even hit the internal network. And so what does zero trust enable? So you get that login via your identity provider. Um, you also get, you know, based on the policies, uh, you can have, you know, allow or deny access, you know, based on all kinds of things, group, device posture, third-party data, like I mentioned, like an on-call, like your pager duty uh, schedule, et cetera. And also, it only exposes what's needed to who needs it. And we'll talk briefly about just VPNs. Um, they break external MCP use. So like, for example, if your tools require a VPN and you expose an MCP server to Claude or ChatGPT, those hosted LMs can't connect to your VPNs. Um, so uh, basically, the server URLs always have to be publicly accessible to be reachable. If you had your own MCP client and MCP servers within your own network, uh, maybe not an issue, but uh, I think a lot of people are trying to wire up these uh, MCP servers to all kinds of things like IDEs and uh, stuff like ChatGPT and Claude. Um, let's talk about OAuth real quick. So the, the spec got updated recently and I believe this is rolling out in the SDKs. I'm not sure if it's in there yet or not, but um, you know, OAuth brings standard login flow and token handling. You get scope bearer token support, which improves security, but OAuth alone just answers what can you do. It doesn't answer, should you be doing this right now, for example? And um, that's kind of where zero trust enters the scene. So, you know. Uh, you got your identity, you got the zero trust evaluating who, what, when, where, and why. Again, talking about context, you know, so device posture, IP, time of day, all basically any anything that your your security posture decides to put in place can be applied to this. Um, aside from that, um, you know, you get visibility. If everything's kind of going through this uh, proxy, you're able to audit what's going on in there. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about Primarium where I work. Um, uh, we're open core, and so everything I talked about so far pertains to zero trust. Uh, Primarium is a zero trust security-based product, uh, but there's some things that we're doing that aren't necessarily part of zero trust in general. Um, so this is more for people looking to build MCP servers or MCP clients. Again, this is all open source. Um, so it's kind of nice if you're an MCP server developer, there's no need to implement OAuth 2.1. Uh, that gets handled uh, by Pomerium. There's no token storage, so which is kind of nice because you don't want to potentially expose all those tokens to the client consuming them. There's just the uh, validated and signed uh, JOT that we have, and you get your identity and policy enforced just on every request, just like anything that you'd be using in zero trust, which is really nice. Um, and I'll just talk briefly. So like 
uh, in an identityware proxy, you have routes, so you're going like from somewhere to somewhere. And the nice thing is, uh, in terms of the not having to build out the whole OAuth 2.1 stuff with your servers, is you just have to configure uh, configure a client ID and a client secret, and you're pretty much good to go. Um, let's move along here, and yeah, for the MCP client developers, it's stateless and simple. You pass a short-lived bearer token. Works for Claude, ChatGPT, or internal tools. And like I said, no upstream tokens exposed to clients. And the clients don't have to manage the auth, like I said, which is kind of nice. These are uh, general benefits again. Uh, I won't necessarily go through all of them, but these are more just zero trust in general. And uh, here's some resources. And I'm just going to do a quick time check. I think I did what I did, which is I talked pretty quickly, but we're going to just do a quick demo here. So um, I'm logging in with uh, with our Authenticate service, but like this can be literally any identity provider. So um, this week I was working on just creating basically like a, a Claude or ChatGPT like experience. So I'm gonna log in here and <laughs> bad request, great. Well, it's a demo, you know, that's what happens. Uh, let me try this again, maybe let's log out. Oh, there we go. Something went wonky. Uh, I'll zoom in here. But basically, what happened there was the MCP client it, that you're looking at right now, this is being secured by Pomerium. So I log in, uh, I get that uh, short lived token. And now I can, if we come over to settings, like I can. I have a for for anybody that's been in the game for quite a while, you're probably familiar with the Northwind database. So uh, we can look at there. This is just like our kind of like fake internal data. So these are the tools I have available. And the nice thing is like if I disconnect here, I'm just going to reconnect. Now, that whole flow to log into that MCP server wasn't necessary because, uh, or at least visually seeing it, because it's the same JOT that uh, sec is securing the MCP client. It's securing the MCP server as well. And then if I just come back to the chat here and then I say something like, uh, let me go off screen for a second here, but I'm uh, just gonna go get a query. And then I think we're pretty much at time after I demo this. So I think we're doing okay. Uh, queries, here we go. So I'm just gonna say, Pull data from our distribution of products by supplier in countries in Europe only and generate a pie chart. Uh, the pie chart might not generate, but you can see here it's calling the tool. Uh, tools in progress. It's telling you what it's going to do. And again, this has been secured as well. Uh, the MCP server, it's secured with Pomerium as well as this. Um, OK, it's still thinking here. Cool. There we go. So. Uh, I don't have it doing pie charts yet, but basically this is live data coming from the Northwind database, uh, AKA our uh, fake internal product database. And you can see like we're getting the real data back and uh, I'm not gonna run some Python right now, but we could get it like that. Um, um, so that's just kind of like a quick demo. There's other things we're gonna be uh, doing with this, but that's kind of essentially it. And uh, I think we're, Pretty good for time at this point, uh, Shannon.